Marseille, the oldest city in France and its largest commercial harbour on the Mediterranean. It's believed that in 600 BC, travellers from the Greek town of Phocis founded the autonomous town of Massalia. In the Middle Ages, the city's main harbour was used by the Crusaders to embark on their journey to Jerusalem. It rivaled those of the maritime republics of Genoa, Pisa and Venice. The Counts of Provence first ruled here, followed by the Anjou dynasty, until Marseille eventually came under the rule of the French crown, from which it was granted many privileges. The developing city was awarded various trading monopolies by Ludwig XIV, a fact that brought it much influence and power. In 1720, the plague annihilated half the city's population because the local traders did not impose a quarantine on infected ships. At the outset of the French Revolution, an army of volunteers from Marseille marched into Paris while singing a heart-stirring song. Thus, the Marseillaise was born. This multicultural harbour city soon gained the reputation of being a little dangerous and somewhat free and easy, but it has now grown into a magnificent coastal city. From a distance, one of Marseille's main landmarks rises high above the harbour, the seafarer's church of Notre-Dame de la Garde. It towers above the city like a fortress, and on its bell tower is a gilded 10-metre-high figure of the Virgin Mary. In the middle of the 19th century, this old pilgrim's church and the fortress made way for a gigantic new building, the Dear Mother of Marseille. The church terrace provides a fascinating view across the city's endless sea of houses, as well as the picturesque harbour below. Wide stone steps lead up to the ornate church that is accessible by way of fanciful drawbridges that extend across an imaginary moat. The church was built according to contemporary design, neo-Byzantine style with alternating layers of natural white and green stone. The facades and also the domes and towers of the upper church were influenced by the architecture of Ravenna. The abundant furnishings of the interior and the Byzantine arches and their golden mosaics highlight wealth rather than great artistry. Numerous votives and replicas of ships demonstrate the dangers of the sea and the desire for a safe return for those who travel upon it. The pilgrimage of the 15th of August is one of the city's most important religious events. A triumphant structure inspired by Byzantine Romanic design, a style that Napoleon III was fond of applying in the 19th century.
The front courtyards give the impression of a mighty fortress. But today, hostilities are a thing of the past. Several steep roads lead up the 154 meter high limestone rock. The old harbor was the original heart of the city. The first harbor of the Greek settlers who came here served as a gateway to Asia Minor. They were followed by the Romans. At the time of the Crusades, the harbour flourished once more and the city's hectic trade during the times of French colonisation attracted many new settlers. The old harbour has always been the heart of Marseille. Warehouses originated throughout the harbour area whose wide variety of restaurants and bars are popular both day and night. Always busy. But the golden age of trade is long gone. The harbour is both too small and too shallow. Now it's only used by fishing boats, pleasure boats and yachts. Several hundred yachts of all sizes crowd into the old harbour, where there's often little room for the comings and goings of modern day sailors. It's difficult to imagine that once near-starving slaves were forced to use their last ounce of strength to row their master's galleys into the harbour. In the early hours, there's much activity at the Quai des Beiges fish market. The freshly caught produce is immediately offered for sale alongside the fishing boats. Modern harbour complexes require a great deal of space, as is well demonstrated by Marseille's new harbour. After Rotterdam, it's the second largest in Europe. Two mighty fortresses overlook the harbour. The northern Fort Saint-Jean is the oldest and was used by the Order of the Knights of Malta. The Fort Saint-Nicolas stands guard over the southern side of the narrow harbour entrance and was built in the 17th century. The French king Ludwig XIV, the Sun King, ordered the building of the fortress. He required the finest protection for his largest and most revered harbour. The fort's upper courtyard has a wonderful view across the entire harbour as well as the city. From here, everything could be observed. From 1905 until 1944, both forts were connected by a bridge that extended across the entrance to the harbour. Today, they've been replaced by a tunnel. The most impressive religious building in Marseille is a fortified monastery church that dates back to the 5th century, the mighty Abbé Saint-Victor. With each of its pinnacled towers, the remains of the second oldest monastery in France are still an impressive sight.
It was once an influential center of both ecclesiastical and worldly power and has retained its mystic atmosphere until the present day, a place of silence and contemplation. Deep down in the rock is an early Christian crypt and a number of stone sarcophaguses that contain the remains of various holy martyrs that date back to the Roman persecution of the Christians. Here, there's a strong sense of antiquity, as it was from here that Occidental Christianity originated. From outside, the Cathedral de la Mer is almost like a domed mountain, reminiscent of Notre Dame de la Garde. The architect, Esperant Dieu, had both churches built simultaneously. This one is situated on the Quai de la Tourette, in the outskirts of the old town. This rather ostentatious church building of Romanic Byzantine design was built on the foundations of a baptistry that dates back to the 5th century. Even the imposing main gate with its figures and columns is an overworked imitation of ancient religious architecture. The cathedral's splendid interior contains numerous works of art, such as a Romanic altar and an exquisite Lazarus chapel. With a dome that is 140 meters long and 70 meters high, it is the largest 19th century church building in France. A truly splendid structure that has developed into a fine work of art. The Triumphal Arch, located close to the Saint-Charles station, was built in 1825 and was based on a Roman model. The dead of both the French Revolution and the French Empire are honored here. Carved in stone are the words La République Marseille Recanaissant. The Palais de Lanchon, this flamboyant palace of Second Empire design, was built in 1869, according to the design of the architect Henri Esperandieu. It was the terminal of an 80-kilometer-long canal that supplied Marseille with the waters of the Durance. A semicircular building with a double row of ionic arcades and a large monumental fountain complex with stepped water features. From the central pavilion that served as a water tower, a wide stairway of water descends, flanked by a number of semicircular stone steps. The architects of the 19th century knew well how to combine historic abundance with modern techniques. An imperial work of a golden age. The arcades in the centre connect two important museums, the Musée des Beaux-Arts, with its world-famous paintings, and the fascinating Musée d'Histoire Naturelle. Stone busts and ancient figures lead into a well-arranged park above the buildings. There's even a small zoo.
When visiting Marseille, it's good to experience one of the boat trips, travels from the sheltered harbour basin to a small island that lies just off the coast. The Chateau d'If, the most famous of many small islands that lie just off the coast. Close to the shore indeed, but once much feared. Early in the 16th century, François I ordered the fortification of the island. In addition to the two fortresses located at the entrance of the harbour. Due to the island's close proximity to the mainland, a good strategic defence was created. It was impossible for any would-be invader to pass through here unnoticed. The fortress extended across the entire island. Its steep walls ended in the sea. The building was impregnable. Due to its unique location, the complex was soon transformed into a prison for both Protestants as well as political prisoners. Escape from here was impossible. However, and much against popular belief, neither the man in the iron mask nor the Marquis de Sade were imprisoned here. They were a thing of fantasy. The tiny island of Chateau d'If was made famous due to a novel by Alexandre Dumas, The Count of Monte Cristo. A small museum features many items related to this classic novel. Visitors can search for the hole in the wall through which Edmond Dante is said to have entered the Abbe Faria. The ferry boat brings new visitors to the island and returns to the mainland, to Liberty. No prisoners ever escaped from here, and none were even reprieved. The nearby landscape is well worth a visit. A romantic road travels south along the coast. Cassis is a charming fishing village with a picturesque harbour that is typical of the Mediterranean. A small medieval castle still surveys the village's population of 7,000. Although busy at weekends and holiday time, this small coastal village is appreciated by one and all, including numerous famous artists of bygone times. With the colourful and neatly laid out houses located along the quay, it's easy to understand why it's also popular with the inhabitants of Marseille. A boat trip from Cassis leads to one of the most beautiful coastal areas in Europe, Les Calanques, a unique nature reserve. Shining white limestone cliffs plunge more than 400 meters into the deep blue sea, and they extend for 20 kilometers. This rocky coastline was deforested in antiquity, 
and has since become a popular nesting place for several species of migratory birds. The limestone here is easily worked and was in much demand as building material for the Suez Canal. In 1975, this area was officially designated as a nature reserve. The many fjord-like inlets here originated during the last ice age and are only accessible by boat. The crystal clear emerald green water of the bays is a marvellous sight, an idyllic and restful setting. The relaxing shade and scent of isolated pine trees, plus the amazing silence, make this the perfect place to while away the hours. Many caves that were accessible during the Stone Age now lie underwater and were discovered by accident, such as the famous Kelong de Somu. Cassis appears once again, hidden in a bay between tall rocks. The boat travels past a lighthouse into a sheltered harbour, whose charm is now almost unique on the Côte d'Azur. Drive along the impressive mountain road is an unforgettable adventure. The Corniche de Crete travels 17 kilometers along the coast. The scenery is truly captivating as we gradually make our way up the narrow road. Mountain pine trees grow in the barren rock landscape. The remote location makes the scenery even more atmospheric. The road continues to climb with breathtaking dizzy bends. The horizon gradually extends further and further. French artist Paul Cézanne once created a famous and historic painting of this special paradise. Wind and weather have created a smooth plateau here. Forest fires in the hot dry summers and icy winter storms have gradually eroded the incredible terrain. The scenery is fascinating. It's like a moonscape and seems to be far removed from all the hubbub of Marseille. The views across the azure blue coastline of the steep Galonque and the mountain world of Provence are truly remarkable. The environs of Marseille and its rugged and rocky mountain landscape highlight the determination of those who once colonized North Africa from here. Marseille, France's wonderful gateway to Africa.